welcome to Scale Car Garage. Well, still on the Porsche 356A Speedster project. Uh, as you can see, we have our parts here and uh, time to, uh, to continue and get it closer to being on the track here at Scale Car Garage. All right, so we have our body parts that were airbrushed. They're nicely cured. We have the brush painted parts. Uh, they're nicely cured. Um, we just haven't painted the inserts yet. Because I, I, if you remember, I was originally thinking of airbrushing them and then I uh, decided against it. Um, these really should be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush paint them along with the wheels uh, on the chassis. So, um, here's what we're going to do. At least here's the plan of attack. Um, I want to go back to the painting, the brush painting <laughs> um, workbench and put more details on the parts that need them. Like, um, believe it or not, the seats actually have piping. Uh, if you look at the, at the photographs, um, there's details that have to be added to the interior front, uh, interior of the front trunk. Um, door cards, uh, the dashboard, uh, steering wheel. Uh, I think we've got most of the details on our chrome parts. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Gee, we have to do the rear lights. We have so much to do. Oh, oh the engine. Oh my gosh, the engine needs to be detailed. Um, we can start doing our wheel inserts and wheels. So lots to brush paint. While the brush painting uh, is curing, then we can come back and attend to our airbrush painted parts. Um, I, okay, I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so um, I think I should just get to work, don't you? Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so here we are, ready to do some brush painting. Now, I know this is a bit of a departure because we're, um, well, let me explain. I, I'm so sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we wanna do the red, lenses on the tail lights. I have found the best um, way to paint uh, red lenses or if you want orange indicators or even yellow indicators. The Tamiya brand of clear colors is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's acrylic. I know I'm more of an enamel type of type of person um, but it's 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 fantastic and, and and here's one of the reasons why um, the first step if the part isn't already chromed is to paint it a chrome silver of, of some sort and that's when you would use an enamel because of course enamels and acrylics uh, you could put an acrylic on top of an enamel and it's it's no problem so um, the model manufacturers have done that for us actually because they've chromed the rear lenses and the great thing about acrylic paints because paints are liquid solids well acrylic is plastic it's a liquid plastic so what you're really doing is you're actually painting a red taillight lens on the part it's 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 really amazing so um we're gonna do that first of course i have my uh acrylic stuff to clean my my brush so i'm gonna do that Hopefully first you can see that and away we go again taking my time just putting i'm creating an actual plastic lens there we go there are our tail lights hope you can see that uh this is just lovely, isn't it? Just lovely. Okay, we can put this aside to cure. The wheel inserts, and um, specifically on the wheel inserts for the actual car uh, it, itself, for the chassis, um, we're gonna start with gray for the inside. Uh, it's, it works, it's close. <laughs> and uh, take it from there, so uh, let's get working. Here we go. Let the paint flow, and we'll uh, 
get a really good result here. Oh, bit of a slip there, but we're going to paint those lug nuts black anyway. But uh, you want to be as neat as possible while you're doing your uh, your painting. There we go. And now we can finish off the hub. So there'll be details on the center nut as well. All right, there's the interior of one insert. And we'll do the rest. Here we go. It really helps putting the inserts on uh, a piece of tape like this because uh, it uh, really helps when you have to manipulate the part to do the painting. And as you can see, I'm just flowing the paint into the recesses of the hub and uh, it seems to be working quite well. How about that? Uh, it's, it's a great way to do it, actually. Let, let the paint do the work. Let it flow. Um, and you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. You just want like a, a little bit of a, of a drop on the edge or the tip of your brush. So then you can guide the flow, which is really what we're doing here. And then once you've got the edges, we can do the center hub. There we go. And very soon we'll have two inserts done. Just continue to do that. All right. And making sure that we've got everything painted, which we do. There we go. Two hubs painted. Well, I'm going to continue painting and then I'll show you when I'm done. Alrighty, so as you can see, there are the wheel inserts with the flat gray paint painted in. Now, you always want to work from the inside out. So we're doing the hubs, and the next step is we're going to paint black, and not flat black, but gloss black in each of those little recesses or the uh, really their vent holes for the wheel. So uh, that's our next step. Let's get our glass black, gloss black. <laughs> Let's say that five times fast. Gloss black paint. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe we didn't have enough coffee this morning. Um, here we go. So let's get started painting that. Uh, oh, I think that looks great. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just admiring. Um, <laughs> anyway, let, let's paint the um, vent uh, holes for the rims in gloss black paint. Here we go. There we go. And again, as with the flat gray, you just want to flow the, the, the uh, paint into the recesses here. Let's just take a look here. And just, just touch and you can see, oh, there we go. It just, it just flows. I don't think I had enough paint. <laughs> I'll actually have to put a little more paint on uh, next time. The other uh, aspect is, you want to make sure that you also get the edge of the insert as well, just in case, like so. There we go. There we go. And of course, the rim will be painted white. Okay, I'm going to continue, and then I will... Uh, Again, show you. Well, let me show you one more. Hopefully, you can you can see this. All I'm doing, let me put this down here so I can see. All I'm doing is pressing the brush into the space and letting the paint flow. Look, it just flows so nicely, doesn't it? Draw a little bit of a draw. 
There you go. The edge. Wonderful. So let me continue and I'll show you when I'm done. So here we are. And that's about as far as we can take uh, the inserts right now. I also painted uh, gloss black in the recesses of the spare wheel. Uh, and uh, I know you really can't see it. It's black. It's in there. But we know it's there. Um, no, it's, it's good to have uh, paint there. So the next step is to let this paint cure. And then we would paint the white to match the rims. And when we do that, we'll also do the rims on the wheels. But this paint has to cure. All right, a little bit of a jump to completed painting. Um, and here I can show you we have the wheel inserts completed. And the wheel inserts actually, uh, hopefully you can see that. Let's see, there we go. Um, the wheel inserts have, um, of course, white, gloss black in the um, little uh, vent areas, uh, matte gray as the uh, paint used for the brake drum, and then matte black for the lug nuts and for the big retaining nut for the wheel. Uh, this is the spare wheel that just has gloss black uh, in the inserts and then uh, white on the rim. The rims of the actual chassis have been painted white, as you can see, hopefully you can see that. And uh, here are the other interior pieces, uh, specifically the front trunk area. And we did a little bit of a, uh, a detailing on the battery. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I thought I'd just add some, uh, uh, some red uh, plugs on top of the uh, lead acid battery. On the actual seats, there's actually white piping and uh, Boy, I tried it a couple of different ways. I ended up just doing it uh, freehand, and uh, I think it will pass muster going around the track. Um, of course, I'm thinking that the, if you can see the one on the right here, uh, a little bit of a mess up on the left side. The one on the left looks much better, so <clears throat> I think this will be the driver's seat, and this will be the passenger seat. <laughs> uh, here is the... Uh, dashboard. Now this is before we've put any decals on and there's the, the, the paint is still curing. So um, the three dials. The knobs I actually used flat gray because the real car um, had uh, sort of these plastic knobs that uh, honestly were not very attractive but um, and nonetheless. Um, here we have steering wheel uh, the top of the dashboard, door cards, um, of course the uh, the boot cover. I mistakenly call this the tonneau cover, but it's actually a boot cover for the rear uh, or for the convertible top. Um, and of course, uh, painted all of the uh, things that needed to be painted on the chrome tree. So we're going to let this cure, and uh, you know. It's always good to leave paint to cure as long as you can, uh, which means we can now move to the body and the uh, body components that we uh, airbrushed, and um, let's uh, let's do a little bit of work on those on the other workbench. So here we go. All right, so here we are back at the uh, other workbench where our body parts that were airbrushed have now cured. Um, basically let them cure overnight or longer. The longer you leave it, the more it'll cure. Um, or better it will cure, I should say, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so we have our bits and pieces and we're going to do, um, I, I love this stage. It's almost as satisfying as the first time you put the car on the track, almost. Um, what I find absolutely satisfying is uh, we are going to, because we used acrylic lacquer, uh, and I ended up doing three coats. Um, so the paint looks quite good, but we can actually make the paint look better. And here's how, uh, at least here's the plan. Uh, let's hope it works. Um, Cause you never know sometimes. Uh, I use something called novice polish um, or novice polish. 
uh, it, it depends on your pronunciation, I suppose. Um, but this is a, uh, th there's no um, financial interest on my part to tell you how good this stuff is, but this stuff is really good. Uh, I actually use this, I play uh, hockey, and I use a clear full visor to protect what facial features I may have. Um, and of course you get nicks and scratches from pucks and sticks and uh, all, you know, accidental. Uh, but this stuff uh, takes all those scratches away. Amazing, and it is made to polish plastics. It's also really good for paints. Um, I thought that this product was originally developed for the automotive industry. I've since learned that this product was actually developed uh, for the aerospace industry, uh, specifically airlines, because the windshields of most airliners are not glass. They're actually very high-tech plastics that over time and use get foggy and it's a novice polish that's used to bring them back to life. And it, it comes in three stages. There's um, Excuse me for a moment. There is one, two, and three. And I, sh I should have brought those out earlier. Sorry about that. Um, three is for very heavy scratches. So, for example, when I have my hockey visor and sometimes it does get scratched, you use the number three, then the number two, and then to finish it off, the number one. Um, but the number two on its own is spectacular for for bringing paints uh, back like, uh, back to life or, or just buffing them up. So we're going to use number two only. This is much too abrasive for, for our bodies. Uh, and then perhaps when the car is done, we'll use number one over the whole, whole car because it actually helps not only keep it shiny, it actually helps repel dust. It really works. Anyway, folks, let's use the number two polish and to use to apply and remove the polish, please use a cotton, a, a cotton, uh, clean cotton uh, cloth or rag or whatever you have, but cotton is, is much better to use than a, than a synthetic. Um, really, it, it, it works. Uh, anyway, so let's get to work. Okay, so the first step is to shake your novice polish number two. You hear that? Oh yeah. Shake it up, shake it up really, really well. I have the instruction sheet here um, just to use as a reference point in case I uh, want to uh, take a look at where the, uh, I know there, there are decals that have to go on the body and so forth, but uh, maybe I'll put it to the side so it doesn't get, get mucky. I was getting ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's do Let's do the body first, actually. Now, the real um, trick to clean, find a clean spot. Okay, the real trick to using novice polish on a model car body is less is more. You don't need very much at all. So it has this applicator nozzle that you can click up. I, I don't use that because, it, generally speaking, I, I, I take too much on the on my cloth. So. I actually take the top off, and you'll notice that in the top there's just, see that, there's like a wee bit, and that's just a perfect amount to dab on your cloth. Here, let me show you. So you, you take the cloth with your finger, nice clean cloth, see, you take your, I like to, to do it with one, uh, one moment please, um, there we go, so take your, your finger, and just dab it. Dab a bit, you see that? That's all you need. That's all you need. So, let's take, and you can see the finish on the car is actually quite nice, isn't it? Well, let's do this fender and compare. So, um, in a circular motion. Also be careful not to get it in uh, grooves and so forth, because, um, well, you can get it out, but you know, let's do half, let's do the fender here, just nice and easy in a circular motion and apply. And we'll probably only have to do this on the body once, maybe twice. All right, and it, I don't know if you can see it's starting to haze, you see that? Get a nice little haze, just like polishing a, a real car, but gentle, nice and gentle. 
let the polish do the work. All right, now let's take another part of the cloth that's nice and clean and buff. Nice and gentle. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can see that, but it has, hopefully you can see that that fender, I'm trying to show some light versus the other fender. And the other fender looks good, but when you compare the two, this is getting more and more like glass, isn't it? Isn't that neat? All right, so let's let's rinse and repeat. <laughs> All right, and, and again, you, you just need a little bit. You don't need very much. A, a bottle this size I, it will last you quite a long time, so um, I would really recommend it. All right, let's do the other fender right here on this side, okay. And again, you don't need much. And you are inevitably going to get some polish in the, uh, in the gaps and in, in the car. And uh, it's easy to take out. I'll show you how. All right. It's, uh, again, we're going to do the front fender again. This time on the passenger side. Nice and gentle, nice and easy, circular motion. There we go. You can see the haze, I hope, on the fender on the passenger side. Take another clean area of your cloth and a nice little rub. Just rub off the, the polish gently. And my goodness, look at that. Isn't that lovely? <gasps> look at that. It's coming to life. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue doing this then. Lovely. I think we have quite the, uh... there we go. Well, I hope that you uh, can see the difference. I certainly can live. I, I hope you can see the difference on the cam, uh, on camera. Um, let me just really try and show that to you because I, oh my gosh, to my eye, it's just so much better. So, so much better. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I wanted to show you how that, uh, how, how I actually do this. And, uh, geez, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm so excited here. <laughs> um, any rate, um, I hope you, hope you like this. I'm going to continue with the other parts and pieces. Um, I think the body is, uh, it's pretty much done, but we've got the um, the other bits to do. So I'm going to get that done, and then we'll be uh, I'll show you uh, show you the results. Okay, so here are the final results of my polishing. Uh, let's take a good look here. Um, you know, I think we've uh, I think we've got something here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, hopefully, you can see how nicely. Um, the light bounces off the car. Isn't that lovely? Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I just put the uh, the other bits on so you could you could see there. Um, here is the front bumper. Here is the rear bumper, and uh, that's uh, novice polish that uh, that did that. And I think it looks fairly fairly good. Um, of course. Um, as you uh, electrostatically charge the car, it does tend to uh, attract a wee bit of debris, but that's okay. Um, anyway, I think it looks fantastic. And uh, I think we're ready for the next step. The next step on this body. So, what should that be? Well, if we look at our instruction sheet, um, 
assuming we haven't built any of the model. Of course, the chassis is done first, and then the body is next. So we're actually at the point of building the body. Ah, well, I think that sounds like a really good idea. First step we're going to do is we're going to put on the decals. So we have, oh my gosh, how many decals to put on? We have one on the nose, on one on the side. Oh, two on this side, right? Because there's the badge and one on the rear. So counting one, two, three, four, five decals to put on the car. So I think we're going to do that first. So the Porsche goes on the front nose of the car, Speedsters on the side, the Porsche 1600 on the back, and of course the um, Coach Builders badge, which goes on the passenger side of the car. So uh, let's get cutting and let's get sizing. Okay, so I've got warm water, uh, or fairly hot water. I've got the decals separated, the body ready to go, uh, some tissues here. Let's put on our decals. Here we go. Isn't that lovely? Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, let's continue. All right. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Wow. Okay, let me continue through here. All right, so the decals are all on. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. As you can see, the decals in this kit are absolutely gorgeous. You saw the Porsche. There's the Speedster on the driver's side fender. Look at that Porsche 1600 logo on the back of the car. Beautiful. And there is the Speedster logo on the passenger side. And of course, there is the Coach Builders badge. Wow. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Well, we're going to continue working on the car and putting the parts on. Um, I think uh, we're going to work on the, uh, the lights and the trim pieces. The last thing I think that we're going to do is the um, securing the trunk, front trunk and the rear engine hatch. Okay, so uh, we've let the car set overnight. I didn't get everything on the body, but let me explain why. But first, um, let's take a look at what the car looks like, because uh, I think you'll like what you see here. Uh, I just can't get over how lovely this car looks. Um, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Now, it's going to need a, a few details yet. Um, now, let me explain what those details will, will be. Um, you know how, if you remember how we uh, scribed the door panel, um, and, and it's got such a lovely, lovely scribe, uh, we're going to flow in some black paint into the door gaps. And we're going to have to do it in a very... Um, careful manner so we don't get we don't want paint in the uh, space for the uh, body molding we want the paint to be in the actual door gap however uh, the other aspect is um, around the rear lights in looking at photographs of uh, of these cars um, there's actually rubber around them so I think I'm gonna try and detail that um, as well as uh, have to detail, I, and I didn't do this because I knew it, they'd be fiddly, um, so I have to paint the uh, directional signals. And again, in looking at photographs, those directional signals were actually white or, or clear. Uh, if you take a look there, you can see uh, I've got to paint them, but I, I got the, uh, the uh, openings uh, with uh, uh, black paint, 
but not the directional signals. So we still have a little bit more to do on this. Um, we have some more decals to do, and I thought maybe we'd split it into a, uh, another, another episode. So uh, still more things to do. Thank you so much for being with me here uh, through this wonderful build. This car is just lovely. I think it's gonna look just great. Um, thanks again for uh, all the wonderful comments, all the great support, and uh, I really appreciate everyone who subscribed. Uh, uh, thank you so much, and thank you for being with me here at Scale Car Garage. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.